I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to work with Logic's drummer instrument, and we're going to see how it interacts with Drum Designer. What I've got here is a basic backing track for acoustic guitar, a little bit of bass, and a tambourine part, and to this I want to add a drummer region. But before we do that, let's just have a listen to the track in progress. So I've based this track around uh, one of the Loop Browser's acoustic guitar regions and I've just added my own bass line and some tambourine. But it's definitely missing a drum part. And for this what I'm going to do is to use Drummer. Now Drummer is a really interesting sort of slightly artificial intelligence based drummer instrument which allows you to configure drum parts in multiple different styles, musical styles, um, around a very interesting set of controls. And having basically configured a basic version of a drum track we can then take it into much more sophisticated territory by getting involved with individual hits and working out uh, how we want to tailor that drummer track to uh, the demands of our track. So let's see how it works. I'm going to come to my logic arrangement, I'm going to set up a new track, and I'm going to choose the drummer instrument which is up here in the top right hand corner. Now what I can do when I'm selecting a drummer track is that firstly I can choose a genre from uh, its list of options and I'm going to go with the alternative uh, drummers. And what I can also do is to select this option to open the library. Now this is a good idea because when I uh, click create what will happen is that Logic's um, drummer region will appear here and what I can also see is that this choice that I've made for alternative drummers is made up here or shown up here again at the top and I can see individual drummers which uh, I can work with. Now these are kind of labelled with the actual names of the drummers that have been assigned um, uh, within Logic and perhaps more usefully what I've also got is a little bit of a description of what each of these drummers does. So I've got an indie pop drummer here, an indie rock drummer and I can go through and find something that I think might fit with my track. So if I was to select for example modern 80s what then happens is that underneath I can see that the kit that's being loaded is being selected here. I can see that for the modern 80s kit um, immediately what that's going to do is to reach into the electronic drum kits available within here and it's selecting this kit called Neon and that's all being done by default. I can change it if I want to but by default what I then get is this sound. Now this drummer isn't really matching the kind of style and feel of uh, my track so what I'm actually going to do is to go up through the list and select the indie pop drummer instead which again this time selects a different kit this time from within the drum kits not the electronic drum kits but the acoustic drum kits and again I can see the kit that's being selected let's just have a listen to this drummer. So straight away now what I've got is a drummer whose sound fits my project much better but what I now want to do is to configure the individual hits using the drummer instrument so I can actually make this pattern a little bit more interesting. So the place that I can do that is down here. I can see that I've got this little matrix which allows me to move between soft and loud hits and simple and complicated patterns. So this little ball allows me to move around and you can see that as I do that the waveform display up here at the top updates. So as I move across to simple patterns I'm going to get fewer hits and when I move across to the right to complex patterns I'm going to get more hits. If I move down to soft those hits are going to be sort of quieter in volume or amplitude and you can see the way that the waveform display just shrinks down a little bit to show those softer hits and if I come up to loud they're going to be bigger and bolder. So I suppose what I want is something which isn't too complicated but is probably a little bit more on the loud side than the soft side. Let's see what this sounds like. So that's working really nicely but what I've actually got within the acoustic guitar part is this slight sort of shuffle, this slight swing and what I want to do is to bring that to the drums too and the way that I can do that is over here on the right hand side where I can dial in a swing value either in 8th notes or in 16th notes. I'm going to just turn this up in 16th notes and we'll see whether this brings a groove that's maybe more a bit more locked to the guitar.
Okay, that's working well. What I can also do is to make some variations to individual kit pieces within the drummer instrument. So for example, if I want to experiment with different hi-hat patterns, I've got different options here across sort of five different variations. So that's working nicely, but what we have a chance to do now is to think a little bit about how the drummer groove is interacting with the instrument that's actually triggering this pattern. This sort of matrix and this option for me to uh, select different hi-hat patterns is a nice little user interface, but what's going on behind the scenes? Well, what we've actually got is an instrument called Drum Designer, which is a drum kit which is being triggered by the MIDI events that the drummer instrument is feeding it. So if we open that up now, we can begin to see some of the options that exist within Drum Designer. So over here on the left-hand side, I can see the instrument that's being triggered is Drum Designer. And when I open this up, I can get to see the actual interface for it. Now, straight away, what I can see is the individual kit pieces, which exist within uh, this drum kit. And if I click on one of these, for example, the snare drum, what then happens is the interface opens up a little bit and gives me a few options. So straight away, the drum kit that we're currently using or the snare drum that we're currently using is this Portland uh, snare. And what I can do as I play back is to audition the other two choices here to see whether or not one of these kit pieces is more interesting. So this first um, Portland snare is certainly a bit more upfront, but I quite like this more laid back Portland three snare, which is here, which I can uh, sort of select. And now immediately that is taking over from the first snare that I was using before. I've also got some controls on the right hand side, which allow me to tune the snare, dampen it so that its sound is less open and ringy. And I can even adjust its gain so that its volume changes relative to the other drums within the kit. Let's do some of that now too. So that's working nicely. I can go through one kit piece at a time and make adjustments to make sure that either my uh, kick drums are being configured or my snares or other kit pieces as well. So opening up Drum Designer allows me to just sort of go under the hood a little bit and begin to see the individual drum instruments that are making up this pattern. Now then, one last thing to do. What if the basic groove that's being created by the drummer region is working nicely, but I want to make some personal tweaks to individual moments within the drum pattern? There's no obvious way to do that because the region that, I'm, uh, that has been created by drummer isn't actually a MIDI region. It's a sort of overview region that's showing me the rough outline of the pattern that I've created. What I want to do is to be able to turn this into a MIDI region so I can make specific note choices. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to close down Drum Designer, which is here. I'm going to go and find the region, which is here within the screen. And I'm going to control click it. And here what I have a chance to do is to come down to the convert options, which are here. And at the bottom of this list or towards the bottom, I can see that I've got this option to convert this drummer region to a MIDI region. And when I do that, the interface updates now showing me each individual MIDI note that was created by the drummer region. I can see how they correspond to these individual instruments. So I can see the kick parts here and the snare is here as well. And what I can then see is uh, the various patterns that exist within um, this region. So I can see here straight away within this MIDI region that I've got all of the individual kit pieces and that's looking fine, except that I found that the crash symbol that's uh, starting at the beginning of bar one sounds really good, but I don't want another one at the beginning of bar five. So what I can do is to select this note and simply delete it. So I can change the way that that um, pattern is happening there. And I can also see that I've got a little bit of variation in the snare at the end of bar eight, and it might be nice to have a little bit of that at the end of bar four as well. I'm gonna just take this very last hit, and I'm gonna copy that back 
to the end of bar four. So we get a little hint of the fill that's going to come later, happening halfway through the pattern. And I might decide that because that's just a little bit sort of smeared with this tom, I could also select that and get rid of that too. So what we've seen within this video is that we've worked with the drummer instrument to bring an acoustic groove to a sort of promising backing track. We've configured the options within the drummer instrument to try and make a groove that sounds like it's fitting the track, including adding some swing and just beginning to think about how loud, soft, simple and complicated we want our pattern to be. And what we've then done is to convert the region to a MIDI region so that we've got note by note control over how that groove sounds.